Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You need to praise the Lord. Even before the Jericho walls fall, we're shouting, we're praising the Lord. He will fulfill our expectation in Jesus' name. It will touch you tonight. Then you'll be able to shout and sing, He touched me, oh, He touched me. And everybody will know, and you will say, I know, because I feel it in my body. I sense it in my soul. I see it in what He has done tonight. That touch will come unto you. Don't worry about anything, anything in your life, anything in the past, anything in the present. The touch of the Lord is coming upon everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you. Always you are loving God. Always you are light breaching God. Always you are a compassionate, merciful God. And here we come tonight. Everyone, without any exception, you are not a partial God. You are going to touch everyone. You're going to forgive whatever needs to be forgiven in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we came for supernatural freedom. And that freedom is spread across. Everyone here will receive the necessary and the needed freedom in Jesus' name. Those online, those on radio, and those with their television set there, or just their handset. Lord, I pray the mercy of heaven and the grace of heaven and the glory of heaven and the liberation of heaven will flow into every land tonight in Jesus' name. A confirmation in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, somebody told me that when we say amen, that we're saying that the promise of God that is going to come is going to be fulfilled in our lives. God bless you. You can see that oh, we're coming to the message today. You know, we're here to receive supernatural freedom. We're here to celebrate supernatural freedom. We're here to possess supernatural freedom. And so today we're looking at the message, forgiveness, freedom, and fullness by faith. Forgiveness by faith, freedom by faith the fullness of heaven the fullness of grace and the fullness of all the virtues that flow from god all by faith coming upon your life your family and your loved ones everyone here everyone there forgiveness freedom fullness all by faith. We're looking at Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And I'm reading from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You see that word there? Bless the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Honor the Lord. Appreciate the Lord. When do I do that? David was a person that knew the Old Testament scriptures. He knew you don't have to wait until the time of the prayer, until the time of the miracle. The Jericho walls are still there. You still feel the pain in your body. You still feel the confusion in your mind. You still feel the torment. Even before those Jericho walls fall, you're looking ahead with great expectations expectation and you know these walls will fall tonight and because you know that even though you still see them standing you say bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name now i told you that david knew the old testament scriptures 
we know something he didn't know because you see paul and silas were not born yet at the time of david in the case of paul and silas it was in the midnight they were suffering and the pain was there and before they, they were even in the prison incarcerated condemned and they're beating them the pain and the sight of the wounds was still there but the wound was soon dry up and the sorrow will soon get away but before the the the, the wounds had dried up they prayed and they sang praises unto the lord the chains were still there the shackles were still there and it was midnight and what were they going to do mama complain look for herbalist and look for incantation no before the shackles were broken they sang praises unto the lord and they didn't sing under their voice they sang and the prisoners heard them and while they were singing and while you are singing and when a choir is singing i didn't hear your amen now and while we are rejoicing together, you know, some of us, when I finish preaching, then we rush to the bus stop. We're on our way. They say what remains, you know, orchestra will be playing. That one, I can miss that. You can't miss that. Because, you know, while the songs are going on, while the orchestra, while they are rejoicing, it may be that time your prison doors will open. It may be that time all the pain you bear, all the sorrow you have, everything will melt away. You stay, you stay, stay till the end and prove me right. And know that when the testimonies are going on and when everything is going on, the praises of the Lord, then your yokes are broken tonight bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name look at verse 2 there in verse 2 bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits benefits forgiveness healing deliverance freedom ease and peace of heart and prosperity all these benefits what you will enjoy today and tomorrow and next week and for the rest of your life bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all these benefits look at verse 3 there who forgiveth who forgiveth there's forgiveness here tonight all thine iniquities you know sometimes when we mention uh, you know the wrongs we have done we call them sin and that's a common word everybody knows that i will call them transgression by now we've had that quite a lot of them but the heavy wage evil iniquities <laughs> that one is like uh, you know a heavy load a heavy wedge and this one is not an ordinary sin but ordinary or extraordinary great or small deep or uh, vice you know the, the vice people commit crime everything tonight he will forgive you Amen. i said you not it's going to forgive other people but you in particular Amen. he will forgive you he forgives all thine diseases and all thy iniquities and he heals and he heals and he heals all it provides safe for everyone and it doesn't measure our sickness it doesn't gauge our sickness they say this one is terminal tonight it will heal you they say this one brings you to the end of life it will heal you tonight who healeth all 
thy diseases. Look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, Who redeemeth thy life, nothing will cut short your life. He comes to give you. He looks at you and he looks at his record at the time of creation. He knows about you. And he knew the time he had given you to spend. And even if, even if you have wasted some of that time and everything he wanted you to do, you will not be able to do if it stops at the time he gave you originally. If you need extension of life, he'll give you extension. If you need prolonging of life, it will give you prolonging of life. If your energy is sucked out, if your power is all gone, and if all the excitement and all the vision you have, everything is drained of tonight, it will give you a new supply. It says, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness, and tender mercies not harsh mercies tender mercies sometimes somebody wants to give you something but is not happy with you god is happy with you i said god is happy with you if he's not happy with, okay that's what you want and he throws it at you as if he's giving it to a dog and you see from the facial appearance from the tone of the language is uh, giving you grudgingly god doesn't do that it doesn't bear grudge against you give me a good amen it doesn't have any animosity against you if paul saul could be saved with everything he had done you have not done one percent maybe of what saul did and god forgave him and god used him yours is to come and say i want mercy tender mercy of the lord and that tender mercy will come to you look at verse 5 in verse 5 who satisfies thy mouth with good things satisfaction saturation salvation and then he says so that look at that look at that it satisfies your mouth with good things so that the youth is renewed like the eagles renewal has come of the Lord tonight in Jesus name once again our topic tonight forgiveness freedom and fullness by faith three things we're looking at look at number one number one is forgiveness through the repentance unto salvation let me put it this way uh, forgiveness and regeneration it doesn't just forgive us it regenerates us he cleanses us he washes us forgiveness and regeneration through repentance unto salvation number two here freedom and recovery freedom and recovery from all sicknesses i rejoice with you tonight in a moment in a twinkling of an eye the torch of the lord will come upon you and there will be freedom. The chains that bind you. The guilt that bind you. And the pain that presses you down. So you could not move. There is freedom. Recovery tonight. From all your sicknesses. I accept. I believe. As you believe. So be it done unto you according to your faith. Number three. Fullness of redemption. The fullness of redemption through our substitute let's look at number one here number one we're looking at forgiveness and regeneration through repentance unto salvation it tells us in acts of the apostles chapter 5 acts chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 13 the god of our fathers raised up jesus whom ye slew and hand 
on a tree. That's serious. Whom ye slew, those Jews, they slew him. They condemned him. How about us too? Everything we have done sent him to the cross. All our evil, all our sins, all our transgressions, all our iniquities sent him to the cross. If I didn't sin, if you didn't sin, if they didn't sin, if there was no sin in the world, Christ will be in heaven uninterrupted and it will not have come to this world. It's not only their sin that he died for. It's not only they crucifying him that he died for. He died for you. He died for me. He died for all because we all contributed by our iniquity, by our transgression, by our sins. We contributed to is crucifixion condemnation and death it says he slew and hanged him on the tree but what you remember while he was there he said father forgive them father forgive them all those people the initial transgressors the initial sinners father forgive them in that prayer he also included you because all the people of the world, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them for they know not what they do. We, do not, we didn't think of the consequence of what we did. It will nail Christ to the cross. And yet it showed love. He showed mercy, he offered grace, he offered forgiveness. Even since that time, he has prayed for you that the Father will forgive you. And so you must come. Don't be like those people. They say, no, we don't want forgiveness. Let his blood come upon us and our children. Don't do it like that. When mercy comes to you, and when grace comes to you, and when the forgiveness of the Lord comes to you, you ought to be so excited. You ought to run and come and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. How loving and lovely you are. How merciful and wonderful you are. That with all I have done, you offer me forgiveness and you don't offer each privately right there in the public in the open you said father forgive them forgiveness will be yours tonight look at verse 31 in verse 31 him as god exalted him him only him only i say cannot save you a great prophet a good prophet he even prophesied about the lord he didn't prophesy about himself that he will be called wonderful he'll be called mighty he'll be called wonderful no he prophesied about christ isaiah jeremiah ezekiel daniel samuel david all the good good people of the past of the present of the future none of them can save you but god has exalted him with his right hand to be a prince and a savior that's our savior that's the by the appointment of the lord by the approval of the lord he is our savior for to give repentance to israel is not a partial god and to the rest of the world and forgiveness of sins to give he has it to give he suffered for it to give and he he was crucified for it there was a great pain in Paul for your forgiveness and now he's ready to give forgiveness of sins you'll get your own today I said you'll get your own today. Hey, look at Colossians chapter 1, and I'm reading there from verse 12. Colossians chapter 1, and we're looking at uh, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet feet suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Any saint you can think about whatever good thing you know about them god 
is calling you. Come stand by the side of the saints. Saint Paul, Saint Peter, Saint John, Saint Mary, Saint everyone. Here they line up and God says, they were sinners before. I made them saints. Come, come. And come and stand be before or beside the saints. And look at what it says. It says, he is to give us an inheritance among the saints in life and when he calls us like that he invites us like that then we say how grateful i am well, we're not you know drawing back and seeing we're still crying we're still mourning we're still rolling on the ground because of our sins he say yes he knows that's why I sent Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ died for you to give you forgiveness and inheritance among the saints who are now in the light. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, who has delivered us it's done not already you know sometimes you have something you don't even know you have you have deliverance you don't know you have you have forgiveness you don't know you have and you have released from all the power all the shackles of the enemy and you don't know you have that you have the freedom it's bought for you it's purchased for you because he gives you redemption it says who has delivered us i just came to give you information tonight you have deliverance and when you know i have deliverance i have forgiveness i have release i have everything and then i give you a chance to come and claim what belongs to you the freedom that belongs to you the forgiveness that belongs to you i give you a chance i say raise up your hand there if you know he's done this for you and you want it now and then you raise up your hand with conviction with confession and you raise up your hand with confidence in god what he has promised me and what he has purchased for me that forgiveness will be mine that salvation will be mine it will be yours in jesus name it says who has delivered us from the power of darkness there are powers in the world and the powers are to stop you they're to hinder you that will block your way while you have life you are excited about life and you are running you have a destination and with all you with all the joy in your life you are running there the power of darkness the power in the world. They are there to, where are you going? What do you want to have? We are here. You want to go above us? We are here. You want to do something we have not done? They want to block you. All the blockages are blown out of your way. Because now it says, He has delivered us. He has delivered me. You know, there is how. A person who is delivered, how he behaves, how he stands, how he walks, how he sets his gaze on the destination and the destiny the Lord has called him to. If we're walking like when we were not delivered, if we're moving like when we were under bondage, if we're still eating the food of the people who are in bondage, if they are forcing things into our mouth and stuffing us with their cigarettes, with their tobacco, and with their marijuana, and with their dirty talk and dirty disposition, how can we say we're delivered? But when we know we're delivered, when we know we're set free, and our walk, and our standing, and our posture, and our stature, everything different from what we were before. Then the people that see you, they will know somebody from heaven touched your life. And they will know 
like you know that because of the difference in your life and because of the power in your life and the forgiveness and the peace of mind they will know that that forgiveness that experience is real it will be real in your life in jesus name who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us it said we should not be under that bondage under that harassment under that disturbance anymore and because of that it transports us because of that it translates us because of that he removes us from the territory of the chief of terrors and the terrible things that the chief of terrors did in the past if they do that again they'll know you are not at home with them anymore I said, you are not at home with them anymore. Satan used to come and knock at the door. He has come, he has come again. And he comes at night when there is no helper, when there is no companion. He comes at night when you cannot call on anybody. And then you say, they have come, they have come. Those evil powers, those evil spirits, and those tormenting spirits, and those epileptic manifestations, they have come. If they come now, they will know you are not at home to be tormented. Yeah. I said, you are not at home to be tormented. Yeah because he has translated us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son they cannot see you anymore they cannot touch you anymore they cannot torment you anymore because you are translated your life is no more in their hand you know they used to as they're passing through uh, passing the sideway they used to see the flowers and then they pluck the flowers and there's nothing they are going to do with the flowers they squeeze them and they rough handle them then they throw them away that's what the devil and the evil spirits and their cause that's what they used to do with your life to pluck you out from your root and to pluck you away from the stand and the place of usefulness and then at that time before you were translated they had the power to rough handle your life to squeeze your life and to destroy your life but now he has delivered you now he has translated you out of the power from the power of darkness and he has now brought you into the kingdom of his dear son look at verse 14 in verse 14 in whom we have redemption we have not that we're going to have tonight you have redemption i have redemption the power of the cross, the power of the blood of the Lamb has come and it gives you redemption. It says, in whom we have, everyone who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, everyone who leans on his weight on the Lord Jesus Christ, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, somebody up there somebody online somebody on radio somebody on television you give your life to christ and he delivers you and he says you have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins do you have it tonight i said do you have it tonight that's what he gives us he gives us forgiveness and regeneration through repentance unto salvation come to point number two here number two we're looking at freedom 
and recovery from all sicknesses. Isn't it wonderful that Christ in heaven, the master of angels, and the master of all the creations of God should think about us and leave heaven, the comfort of heaven, the glory of heaven, and leave all the worship of heaven, and leave all the privileges and opportunities he had in heaven. There was a magnet drawing him to the earth, the magnet of love, love for every creature, and love for every sinner, and love for every captive, and love for everyone here, dejected and depressed and being destroyed. He said, they cannot save themselves. They cannot rescue themselves. They cannot set themselves free. So by love, he came for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him and call on him will not perish but have everlasting life. And we're told in Mark chapter 16, Verse 15, freedom and recovery from all sicknesses, he said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature no one exempted you see the love of god he didn't say go and preach to the jews that they will be free go and preach to the civilized gentiles so they can be free go and preach to the people that are educated that they may be free and he didn't say go and pray go and preach to the poor alone so that they can be free. Those poor people, they have uh, suffered so many things there on earth, deprived of so many things on earth. Go and pray to know every creature, every creature. And you are part of that every creature. He wants the message of freedom to come to you, to get to you. He wants the understanding of the message of freedom to come to you. And for you to understand it to the point, you know, this is for me. And then, as we say, this is for me. You willingly and you happily stretch out your hand of faith and say, Lord, I am here. Forgiveness by faith. Freedom by faith. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, He that believes, the one who says, Yes, I know, that's for me. I recognize the love of God. That's for me. I recognize he doesn't want me to be in bondage to sin, in bondage to sickness, in bondage to Satan, in bondage to evil spirit. He wants to set me free. And because of that, I accept, I believe he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved that word baptized there is talking about water baptism why he wants you to give a public public recognition to what has happened to you uh, you know you believe you believe in your heart people may not know you believe you believe the message of love and mercy and grace and you may be the only one that knows you feel the joy in your heart and you feel the happiness in your life it's all private make it public now let others know, let them see that you are not ashamed of the one who has set you free. Come in public with other people who have also taken the same step. And in public, what has happened in the private, you now bring it to the public. You are baptized, you are saved. You confess it. You are saved. You have confidence in the grace of God and you are saved. He that believeth not 
Even if he's baptized, infant baptism, adult baptism, old age baptism, is about to cross to the other side. And uh, those ignorant uh, preachers, they say, you know something, you need to be baptized quickly, quickly, because you can die anytime. And the man does not believe in Christ as the only Savior. He that believeth not shall be damned. And then in verse 17, it tells us for 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe they believe in their heart and that jesus is the solution to every problem the problem of sin they believe jesus is the solution the savior the problem of sickness they believe that jesus is the solution is the healer and the problem of demonic oppression attack affliction they believe that jesus christ is the one to totally set them free they believe that he is our deliverer he is our redeemer it said these signs shall follow them that believe you believe tonight i said you believe tonight and the signs and the wonders will follow after you it says in my name not in any other man's name that's a great preacher i can pray in his name no that's a successful spiritual man apostle i can pray in his name no it's only in the name of jesus we have salvation regeneration total change total turn around in our lives redemption that he redeems us from the power of the greatest enemy that is going up and down and to and fro in the world to destroy people he gives us christ is the only one that gives us total redemption and you believe on him and in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues in verse 18 they shall take up serpents since the time of adam and eve enmity had been between the old serpent and the whole of humanity and that old serpent had been pursuing every man every woman and he has small small serpents that will run errands for him and touch and destroy and bite and sting everyone but now the christ our redeemer that christ our savior has destroyed the power of the old serpent by his death on the cross for us all the other serpents spiritual they come in the night they come in the dream they come in the day and they try to put their poison in us they are destroyed. When David defeated Goliath, all the other people that lined up behind Goliath, thinking when Goliath kills David, then we will do havoc to the people of Israel. When David killed, destroyed Goliath, all those other people, they fled. You didn't hear that one. Yeah. What did they do? Yeah. Christ, the son of David. The son of David destroyed Satan. Total, technical, spiritual, heavenly, final, knockout and knockdown. And when Jesus, the son of David, did that, all the other people that are the power of the old serpent, they have fled. They can only torment people now that are ignorant of their deliverance. It says they shall take off serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing accidentally, poison will not kill you all those secret things will not cut short your life 
all that you do whatever you drink you drink water you drink whatever and if anybody tries to you know put anything in so that this will happen that will happen you'll be getting stronger getting fatter and you'll be increasing in weight and good things will keep on happening to you in jesus name and then they will say didn't he drink that thing didn't he have that thing didn't he swallow that thing yes he did but the promise of god removed extracted all the poison from that thing that's why you're still alive. If I were you, if I didn't have Christ, and I hear these are the benefits of knowing Christ, I will run to Christ. I will say, I want to be saved too. I surrender absolutely into your hands because of the privilege, because of the provision, because of the power that Christ gives us when we're saved. And were born again and then it says they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover and you will recover and even you too you come and join the line of those who give the healing of christ unto others my brother anytime if you're born again that's why i call you brother my sister you are born again that's why i call you sister you are now in the kingdom and the power of the kingdom will manifest through your life in jesus name and it says you lay hands on the sick and they will recover verse 19 in verse 9 so then after the lord had spoken unto them this was his last word his final word you know somebody is going to travel he's going to travel to a far country and then he calls sons and daughters and the members of the family he will not tell them things that are superficial things that are not important this is the last time he's talking to them and he's going away and they will not see him face to face in the physical for some time and so christ knew he was going to heaven and they were not going to see him face to face and he told them the final word the final word that they would lay their hands on the seat and all those people they will recover never forget that these are the final words of jesus so then after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of god he sat on the right hand of God. If you've been standing, if you've been walking, if you've been laboring, and then you go to sit down, that means you'll finish your assignment. And Jesus, because he had finished, and he said, it is finished, it is done, to crush the devil, to forgive your sin, and to take, to break every yoke in your life, he had finished and so now he sat on the right hand of god what's he doing there he's making intercession that everything he did will come to fulfillment what's he doing there he's talking to the father i have pronounced the father you forgive them and here mine now look at them they're going to yield they're going to surrender they're going to give themselves unto the lord is sitting right there by the father that's him there forgiving that's how they forgive her a sacrifice for their freedom the powers that used to chase them about father look at that one is bound and he wants total deliverance father do it now and the father always hears him the father will hear jesus on your behalf tonight look at verse 20 in verse 20 and they went forth and preach everywhere the lord walking with them the lord walking with them how saving souls killing people 
delivering the oppressed, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word and confirming their word and confirming their pronouncement and their declaration every preacher that goes out and he goes in the name of the lord and he's doing what the lord told him to do the lord will be walking with the preacher will be confirming the word with signs following why don't you say better amen we we'll come to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at fullness of redemption through our substitute. He died in our place. He died in your place. He suffered in our place. He suffered in your place. He bore the pain already. He bore the punishment already. He did that in your place. Now, the fullness of blessing will abide in your life. Forgiveness, certain and sure. Freedom, certain and sure. Anything, everything, everything that Jesus died for, now you can have. I can have. I will have. And tonight, it will be fulfilled in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, and every desire you have that Calvary already has provided for that his crucifixion already has provided for that the Christ crucified for you that died for you and that rose again for the fullness of the power of god in your life as your substitute it will be done tonight in jesus name we're looking at first corinthians chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse 7 Put out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lamb you'll be a new man a new woman from tonight and then it says as ye are unleavened for even christ our passover is sacrifice for us for us because of the forgiveness he knows we need for us because of the freedom he knows we need for us because of the fullness he knows must be in your life and my life and in every life belonging to him and believing in him for us look at second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 for he has made him to be seen for us to be the substitute for us to be the sacrifice for sin for us and to be the savior for us he knew no sin who knew no sin by personal experience he never committed any sin yeah, the just dying for the unjust is the spotless dying for the sinful is the one that is perfect dying for the imperfect who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him we come to him we come into him we envelope ourselves with him and as we are in him fully completely unreservedly absolutely for him and in him now we are made the righteousness of god in him when you are forgiven when you are set free when you come into his fullness god looks at you as he looked at jesus no blame no blemish no guilt 
no condemnation righteous and because of that everything you ask he grants you and today total redemption for everyone in jesus name galatians chapter 3 reading here from verse 13 galatians chapter 3 verse 13 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law every curse the curse of the law and the curse of the lawless the lord has redeemed us from every curse being made a, a curse for us substitute a curse for us he bore all our curse all our judgment the eternal judgment that shall come upon everyone those who believe the lord has taken that condemnation and that curse away and you are free the moment you come and you say here am i lord you bought the curse for me the curse of the broken law be made a curse for us for it is written god said is everyone that hangeth on a tree look at verse 14 in verse 14 that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ i'm sure you remember abraham. god called him abraham my friend and now that blessing comes upon us we're no more enemies of god when we're forgiven we become the friend of god god said can i do anything that i'll not really reveal to abraham and he says the blessing of abraham will come on us and then he told abraham he said i've heard about the sin of sodom and gomorrah and it's so high it's so great i want to destroy them i'm giving you information of what i want to do abraham and the blessing of abraham is that he could discuss that event with god his friend god don't do that if if you see 50 people righteous there will you not set them free will you not delay that kind of judgment abraham because you are talking about it i will about 45 righteous people 40 righteous people 30 righteous people 20 righteous people if you find 10 there will you not spare them abraham my friend coming from your mouth i will and he makes us now to have the blessing of abraham we can talk to god and we can tell him you wanted judgment on this on that will you delay that because you have the blessing of abraham and i said i will not i answered abraham i will answer you tonight god will answer you righteousness came on abraham he believed in his god and the lord counted that for righteousness righteousness will come upon you today because christ has borne the curse for you that you might have that you might possess the blessing of abraham you're no more like a refuse you're not like reprobates or not like rejected people you are now coming to god and you have a fruitful relationship with god when he gives you the forgiveness he gives you the freedom and he gives you the fullness and he says the blessing of abraham comes upon you through jesus christ as you place your faith your confidence your trust in jesus as your savior tonight that's what happened and he says that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith we come to the lord tonight and we say lord here am i i come what have you come for freedom 
I understand Christ already paid for you, that you have the freedom, you have the forgiveness, you are forgiven, and you are free in Jesus' name. Or you are a believer already, and you say, I come for his fullness, of his fullness, and we all receive grace for grace, and the fullness will come upon your life. You will not go back home empty-handed tonight. The joy of the Lord and the happiness we have in Christ and the glory that he puts upon us to bring every son to glory. He will do it in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I accept. Say it very well. I believe. I confess, I confess my sins and I confess the mercy of the Lord reaches me and I confess I have the forgiveness, I have the freedom, I have the fullness by faith in Christ tonight. Amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. He comes to bless you. He comes to forgive you. All that guilt, why did I do that? Forgiveness is waiting for you. How could I have done that? Forgiveness is waiting for you. I feel the torment and the torture of the things I said and the things I did. Forgiveness has come to you. And I pray you will receive total forgiveness tonight in Jesus' name. It's about eyes closed. The Lord Jesus is by the right hand of the Father now. And he's looking at the face of the Father. And he's also looking at you. And if you want what he demands from the Father, your forgiveness, really, really, truly in your heart, what you'll do is you'll raise up your hand. Let Jesus see that. That in your heart, you want forgiveness. Your heart, in your soul, you want that forgiveness. And that you receive that forgiveness now from the throne of grace. Raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Those who are online, you want this forgiveness is real. It will give you peace of my joy of salvation. Anyway, you are online. Raise up your hand right now so that that condemnation of guilt will not continue and you are watching over the telly and you are listening over the radio he wants that forgiveness and freedom for you that where are you raise up that hand the lord is there with you he has compassion he has mercy and he wants to set you free from that guilt that could lead you to eternal perdition so raise up that hand if you are raising up your hand here there everywhere please stand up and you're saying lord here am i that's right that's right my brother dear my sister dear just stand up and you're indicating that you want the forgiveness you desire the forgiveness from the lord and you want the condemnation and the guilt to be totally taken away Keep standing and praying for you now. And Christ is also praying for you before the Father. He died for you. It's your substitute. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you tonight because you are loving and gracious God. And you bring your forgiveness to every guilty one because everyone desires that you will have the forgiveness and the salvation of the Lord in your mercy, in your love. Forgive everyone one of them in jesus name lord i pray the freedom that comes with that believing on the lord i pray that freedom will come to everyone right now the joy of salvation the peace of mind and the rest in their soul grant unto them in jesus name lord 
write their names in the book of life in heaven so that finally they will spend eternity with you in heaven thank you lord we know you cannot deny anyone and you cannot deny these who really from the depths of their hearts desire the freedom and the forgiveness thank you lord because we know you have done it in jesus name we pray another amen confident trusting amen it is done we call on our officiating minister tonight uh, to come and help us with this session of Counseling, Pastor. Keep on standing. Our counselors are by your side. Keep on standing. They are there to help you so that they can know where you live. They can know how we can contact you so that we can offer you some help and assist you in retaining and maintaining the decision you have made tonight. And so our counselors, please, our choir members, can you please rise up, help us, and go around. If you gave your life to Christ, but because you are, you are helpless sitting down, you have infirmity that made you not to stand up, please signify so that our counselors can see you and give you attention, give you assistance. We also want to tell our online audience that if you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link that is on your set, on your handset, or your tablet or whatever you are using to watch this broadcast, you will click it and fill the form. We can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Just fill that form and send it to us on that link. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number we are going to call now. Plus 234 915 Four 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 nine two six three. Again, I'll call it out plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. So send us your details through this uh, number. And so please, our counselors, let's be fast and attend to everybody. Reach out to everybody. Help everybody. Please, we want our leaders, our counselors, please go around, keep on standing. If you have not been attended to, please raise up your hand so they can see where you are. Go to the back as well. Go to the far left as well. And reach out to the far right. Down there. Let's attend to everybody. And those of us who are giving our lives to Christ, including those who gave their lives yesterday and on Thursday, there will be a special meeting, a lunch hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Christ. Tomorrow, 
afternoon by 3 p.m. at the church auditorium by my left as you are coming into this venue you see that church auditorium by the right there as you are coming in it is just by our left here so please you will come there by 3 p.m tomorrow after the global worship so that we can have that fellowship there is a package for you from the convener of the gck so please our counselors let's be fast please can i know may i know if you are true at the left hand side if you are true please wave your flag let's be fast let's be fast if we are true at the central part here in front can you raise your flag if you have finished okay thank you those at the far back if you have finished there can you raise your flag at the central back god bless you if you are at the right hand side in the front and you are finished there can you raise your flag please can you raise your flag at the right hand side god bless you those at the back at the far back at the right hand side you are finished there can you raise your flag god bless you those at the left hand side please may i know if you have finished attending to our new converts can you raise your flag so that i can see it okay you are the ones left so let's be fast let's be fast the left hand side all the other parts are true and for those who have who have given their lives to christ there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to christ on Sunday, the 2nd of July, that is after tomorrow, the very next Sunday, there will be a banquet for all of us. And more details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. God bless you. And those who are, are from Alpha location here in Port Harcourt, there will be that banquet on Sunday, the 2nd of July, at the Deeper Life Bible Church by 3 p.m. Tomorrow, you'll be told of the centers where they will be. All the Deeper Life centers where you will attend, it will be by 3 p.m. So don't forget. Our counselors at the left hand side, are you true now? In the front. If you are true, can you raise your flag? Let me see it. Please wave it at me. Okay. At the back. At the back. At the back. The far left. At the back. If you are true there, can you please raise your flag at the far back? Raise your flag, please. At the far back. Okay. God bless you. We shall all rise up on our feet now as... Our Father in the Lord comes to pray for us. Pray for us. Praise the Lord. Freedom. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout, Freedom. Freedom. Freedom from disease, freedom, freedom from freedom from disease, freedom from sickness, freedom from evil power, total freedom, complete freedom coming from the Christ on the cross.
coming in from the Christ who rose up for your salvation and for your healing. Coming from the Christ that sits at the right hand of majesty on high. There is no exception. There is no partiality. And there is no sectionalism. Okay, I'll touch this. I'll not touch that. He'll touch everyone. Amen. He will heal everyone. He will set everyone free. Amen. You know, you are a candidate for miracle tonight. Where are you? A candidate for the freedom that Christ gives. A candidate for the freedom from sickness, from infirmity that Christ has accomplished on the cross when he said, it is finished and that comes upon your life right now anyway you are here you lay one hand where you have the problem and then you raise up the other hand online you can do that as well because freedom is coming to you those who are watching over the radio it's coming to you and those who are watching who are listening over the television and then on your side freedom everywhere freedom in every life freedom in every family freedom in any congregation where you are as the name of christ is mentioned it sets you free yeah. amen raise up that hand and lay the other hand where well, you have the challenge your eyes are blind it's going to open those blind eyes your ears are deaf it's going to open those deaf ears and your limbless could not carry you or you cannot walk the power of the lord will touch every part of you it will loosen you up release you from sickness and release you from the arthritis and release you from that cancer from that incurable disease your time of freedom your time of healing your time of deliverance has come now whosoever will call on the name of the lord will be saved will be healed will be delivered will be set free here is your time don't miss it don't miss it here is your time looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith we're ready now when you hear the final amen check up yourself you will see that all those sicknesses are gone all those infirmities are gone all those diseases are gone in Jesus name father we thank you at this time we bless your name we know that when we pray here the prayers get into the hands of Jesus and then Jesus hands over that request unto you and immediately your answer because the prayer passes through the hand of Jesus, your only begotten Son. We're praying now, Lord, for the confirmation of total healing in every life here tonight. In Jesus' name, complete healing, total healing, and total deliverance. Lord, we pray, will come to everyone oppressed, harassed, tormented, having pain. Heal them now in Jesus' name. Deliver everyone from the derangement of the devil, of Satan, that problem in the mind, that problem in the brain, and that problem that came as a result of taking those hard drugs. Everyone now set them free in Jesus' name. Christ, you are Jesus, the light of the world. Everyone that comes to you will not continue in darkness. The darkness of blindness, the darkness of glaucoma, the darkness of bad eyesight. Touch their eyes, take the darkness away in Jesus' name. When the blind open their eyes tonight, 
I pray their sight will be bright. I'm asking, Lord, for those who are deaf and dumb and that infirmity and that impairment of their ears and their tongue, I loosen their cause in Jesus' name. That Lord sound will come out of that vocal cord tonight and hearing will come through to them in jesus name every kind of swelling in the tummy every kind of swelling in the feet elephantiasis every kind of swelling any part of the body lord i pray your mighty hand that sets free that removes our lord i pray that mighty hand will touch everyone now you set everyone free from every kind of swelling in jesus name lord i pray that asthma having difficulty to breathe and it's almost they're breathing their last i pray you touch them and you touch that asthma remove that asthma heal that asthma and set them free in jesus name i'm asking for those who have internal problem like in the kidney in their liver everything and those who have any form of cancer whether of cancer uh, in women or cancer prostrate in any man lord i pray with you all things are possible with you, you set people free. I pray that you take all those different kinds of cancer, take everything away from them in Jesus' name. That pile, I pray you remove that pile. And that blood of always flowing with urine and with uh, passing uh, in the in private parts. I pray, Lord, everything you cancel and crush and set your people free in Jesus' name. Psychological problems. Trauma, 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 trauma in their lives. I pray that all those psychological problems, confusion, giving the going there, going there, confusion in life. Lord, I pray by your mighty power, which cannot fail, I pray that all those problems are cast out right now. Demons, evil spirits, the mention spirit, anywhere you appear there. I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, the desired miracle, the demanded miracle, the desirable miracle that everyone is expecting, I pray, give him there. Give her there. Manifest the power that cannot fail. Lord, effect it right now. Demonstrate it right now. Manifest it in every life right now. Confirm your miracle power in everyone. Set everyone free. As free as the one that sets us free. Make freedom to flow like an ocean like a river and flow to every life there tonight in jesus name it is done it is done it is done we well, thank you lord because we know we have received put testimony in every mouth in jesus name we pray Keep on standing, keep on standing.